Well, thanks for joining me. And today I have as my special guest, Victoria's Ombudsman, Deborah Glass. Deborah, thanks for joining me. My pleasure. Well, Deborah, you've just uh, released a, um, a groundbreaking report, really, uh, in relation to Victoria's prisons. And you come to what some might consider a fairly um, startling observation, and that is that uh, building more and more prisons doesn't really make us safer as a community. How did you come to that view? Well, if you look at the statistics, they are compelling. Over the last, um, broadly last five years, what we've seen is an increase in crime, an increase in prisoner numbers, and along with that an increase in the cost of prisons, you know, over a billion dollars a year, but alongside that an increase in recidivism. So, you know, so what we're seeing is that more and more people are going into prison and coming back there. Now, that is not making us safer as a community. And what did your report find about the type of people who are in our prison, behind our prison walls at the moment? Again, you know, the, the numbers are compelling. You know, the, um, if you compare people inside prisons with the population as a whole, a um, highly disproportionate number of people with drug and alcohol problems, with uh, mental health uh, problems, uh, people of, of uh, low educational levels. You know, and let's just take you know, that one, for example. You know, 6% of male prisoners have finished year 12. Now that compares with nearly 90% in the population as a whole. Well, prisons are there, I suppose the community takes the view, to punish people, but also to rehabilitate people. So they come out um, as, um, you know, uh, worthwhile citizens in the community. Are there appropriate rehabilitation programs taking place in our prison at the moment? Well, broadly, no. I mean, you know, the programs do exist. And, and what we're seeing is, is also an example of the system being overwhelmed by numbers. So there are programs inside our prisons, and some of them are good programs, and you know, and, and they may well be very effective if, 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 if you know, if, if people are actually able to access them. Uh, what we've seen is, you know, as a result of the increase in prisoner numbers, is that there is a considerable queue for access to programs, and programs cover a range of levels. There are programs that are designed to address the causes of offending behaviour. There's a significant queue for those. Uh, there are requirements at the parole board, and what we're finding as a result of that is that more and more people are coming out of prison uh, on straight release, you know, without because they either can't get access to those programs or they decide they can't be bothered. Now, that's again not good for us as a community. Well, in your report, you talk about something called justice reinvestment. Uh, what is justice reinvestment, and do you think it'll work here in Australia, in Victoria? Justice reinvestment is basically a term for the diverting of funds from one end of the prison spectrum, you know, which is prisons, you know, you, you, know, you, you, go, you cycle through the justice system and you commit crimes and you end up in, in, in prison. And so diverting funds from that part of the justice system to the, perhaps looking at the causes of, of, of crime and offending. So, so for example, you, know, you, 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 you can identify there may be pockets of... Um, uh, it was areas within within the state, you know, within particular postcodes or particular communities, where there is a great deal of crime, and you know what, what what's causing that crime. So you can actually take funds from one part of the system and invest it into, say, drug and alcohol rehabilitation programs, into diversion programs, into education, into you know whatever the numbers are telling you is causing crime in the first place. And is it cost effective? Does it save us money as a community? Fundamentally, it is incredibly cost effective, and we, we've got international examples of this. You know, you know not least in in, um, in you know Texas. You know, the um, not exactly famed for its uh, soft on crime approach, you might say. You know, where they have saved hundreds of millions of dollars uh, on building new prisons through diverting people out of the prison system and into forms of rehabilitation. Okay, so um, we have large numbers of people in our prisons, increasing numbers. Um, rehabilitation programs in prison do exist, but um, they're not totally adequate. What about um, when people come out of prison um, and rejoin the community? Are there appropriate transition from prison to community programs in place? No, and that's one of the really striking things, I think, about uh, what we've seen in this investigation, which you know, started out as an investigation into prisons. And what, what you learn very quickly when you're doing a piece of work like this is that you've got to look at it in the context of the system as a whole. So people are coming out of prison into homelessness, into unemployment, uh, into lack of family contact, and all of these things are contributing to reoffending. So, you know, for example, you know, we, have a, we have one transitional centre in the state which houses 25 male prisoners. It's incredibly effective at reducing recidivism. 
But that's 25 people out of the thousands and thousands who are coming out of prison every year. So one of the things we need to do is, is, is look at the kind of services that are being offered there that, that, that do improve the chances of people actually remaining crime-free in the community and see whether we can broaden that out. Well, Debbie, you've made a whole range of recommendations in your report and the report has been presented to the Parliament and the government is aware of your recommendations. What are the consequences, do you think, to us as a community in not implementing your recommendations? I think it's dire. You know, the, you know, we, we are spending over a billion dollars a year already in our prison system. The system is simply not sustainable. You know, you, we, if, if you look at Corrections Victoria's current projections, you know, they are looking at a yet further increase in relation to the prison population. And we simply can't afford a system that is spending more and more money on prisons without a, a, an increase you know, in, in community safety. So you know, we know that over 99% of prisoners are going to be released someday. You know, so we need to ensure that we're getting value for money, and at the moment we're not. We don't want to make you know, really hard choices between prison beds and hospital beds. Well, Deborah, can I uh, thank you for your report and thank you for joining me today. My pleasure. Well, if you want to hear more about um, our prison system and people living behind our prison walls and alternatives to prison, come to the forum at RMIT University on the 24th of February. Have a look at the Centre for Innovative Justice website and you'll get all the details.